Right, hi everybody. Um, just, I can see the stats from our video views. Um, I don't know if they're private or public to be honest with you. But a lot of you seem to be following what I'm doing with these. If I go back to these, so from yesterday and the last few videos. Um, if you're new and this is the first time you've seen the videos, go on my channel and uh, there's videos about all these and these papers and things. So the thing about doing something like this which is inspired by several design sheets that I made earlier this year, this just being one of them, is that it doesn't hurt to perhaps go back and do a little bit more design within the process. Uh, it might just spark a new idea that hasn't come to you yet. I've only got this one out today, but I've only got this one out because I wanted to talk to you about this area. This, I love this, cult, the colour mix and the layout of that, the composition and down here and all the things that I've torn out and stuck on. I really like that, that aspect of this one. And these things I'm tearing, by the way, they're from these Japanese magazines. Um, Little Thing magazine. I have to mail order them, but they're just beautiful. The, the illustrations and everything are fabulous. Um, so that's what I use for the papers that I tear and put on these and also you can put found objects on now I may come back and put found objects on the one I'm going to do today and I can't do a full one anyway it's getting like a class this isn't it um, but I'm going to make a little start on a new one with reference just <sighs> psychological reference in my head um, to what I'm doing here okay I'm going to start a new design sheet because it won't hurt you can never have too much information when you're going forward with something like this so what i want to do is i've got some more i tore these out earlier these are old ones but for example that magazine i mean look at that that's lovely torn up that'd be amazing i think i've torn two pages there by accident yeah but it just gives you a measure of what i've got to work with them I in mean, that beautiful that's from that magazine, from one of those magazines anyway. So these are the ones that I think are nearer, more similar to what's going on on the design sheet that I've just moved on this design sheet. Um, so I very rarely use glue. I'm really, really glue averse. don't like it at all. But for paper collage and for putting a design sheet together, then I do succumb and use it. So that's a strip that I found that's already been torn. So I'm just going to put some Pritt stick on the back of this. What I want to do is add some of my stitch papers and do some pin pricking. So you need to see what I'm doing here with that. And also I've got an apron on today. You see, right? that's because I've got a red shirt on and it affects the light. If I'm taking photographs and I don't cover up the shirt with an apron, the pictures have a red tinge to them. So if I put that there, okay get a couple more bits like I really like what's going on here so I'm going to get that bit literally just tear it out and they are plonked for now but hopefully they'll be um, it'll all flow once this is finished there's a lot of work goes into these they're not something you can just sit down and do and then it's finished so you'll overlay things, found objects might find their way onto here um, go back to this one again so that was plonked on but then it was added to there overlaid with another image, overlaid with some fabric there's a lot of building up to do, different layers and things to make up I'm not going to spend a massive amount of time on this bit because otherwise but I can hopefully come back tomorrow and do some more on here because after tomorrow I'm going to be a bit missing. Um, I've got some family stuff going on that I can't avoid. Um, so after tomorrow I might not, I don't know when I'll be back to be honest with you. There's all kinds of things going on. Um, so I'll just this bit on. I'll put that there. There's no plan here. This bit, I like this bit, it's like a load of ribbons and stuff. So I'll tear a little bit of that. And that can perhaps go there. OK. 
Okay, now that's it now for the glue. For now, I mean, this is a big sheet. This is A3. There's a lot of work still to do on here, but what I wanted to do was get some of my papers down here, on here, um, and then do a little bit of pin pricking. I haven't brought a pencil. I need a pencil. Right, so I'll just separate some of my papers. Pencil, Karen, you silly, silly Billy. So look. Now I like, love the one that's got the the pin tucking going on. Maybe put a bit of this on. Might be too big that bit. I'm thinking about layering. A bit big and a bit square, really. There's a lot of uh, faffing about to go on. I wonder if I could put that there and maybe not use this. I'll make it a bit smaller, maybe. Or maybe fold it, maybe. You see, this is all the kind of thing that goes on, you have to know. I'm concerned because I don't want to rush this, but I feel like perhaps it's a rush. Because I'm just going to stand up and go and get a pencil. I do apologise. Um, This is, there's a lot, 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 lot of work to do on this. So, tomorrow I'll do a bit more. And like I say, after that I'm wondering what I need here. Maybe that, this is how it goes, or this is what happens all the time with things like this. What have I done with that bit that I cut before? Maybe if this was thinner, uh, maybe that's the problem. But this is the process, and it's always like this. It's not a quick process at all. Um, if I just get this, the workings of the beginning. Maybe put that on there. Yeah, that's, that's actually making me happier, because it's narrower. And then maybe there. And I don't worry, because at the minute that doesn't look like anything. But I don't worry because there's so much more work to do on here. And even if I do all the way across there and I'm still not happy with them, then I can take them off because I do not glue that on. I tie that on, okay? Always tie fabric and these delicate papers on. Never, ever glue these things down. So if I'm not happy when it comes to it, then I just take it off. So go down... And then come up again just a little bit away. Because this is so open, this paper. Oh, I see it's not. I might not want to play ball. I'm trying to go through the stitch bit because it'll be thicker. Right, so let me see. Let's tie that on. I always tie things like this on, always. Sometimes I leave the knots at the front, sometimes at the back. It doesn't really matter yet because I haven't got as far with this. And um, that it's obtrusive on the front, you know what I mean? It's not getting in anybody's way on the front. That's just gone on the floor. So now the pin pricking, so again, I go down, and come up, so 
So the pin pricking can be really useful for softening edges and things. Okay. So what I'm thinking is I mean this is gonna look like nothing today because there's not a lot of work on it, but so I'll tie this one on later, if you know that's gonna go somewhere there. Somewhere like that, isn't it? So if I put my threaded needle away. So the pencil is to draw on the back where I need to pin prick, but I don't need it actually, I could have done without it because um, I'm going to soften this edge and I can do that I have some of this wadding that I put underneath the pinprick in so I can do that and I use my paper pins for pinprick in these aren't special pins if this is the first video you've seen of mine they're just fabric pins that I use for pinprick in because Pricking through paper or pinning paper dulls your pins um, and makes them less sharp. I'm going to turn that around because I don't want to lean on it and crease it. So, pin pricking from the front gives you a texture, but not a massively textured surface. But it's also a good way of being aware on the reverse where you need to prick from the reverse because I prefer to prick from the reverse because it's more textured. So now I'll turn that over and within that line, on this side of that line, I'll do a load of pin pricking. And then that will give me a nice texture on the front so at some point I might stitch into with French knots and things. Or I might do a couple of French knots now just so you see the effect and then if you turn it over and have a look you can see the texture there and it softens edges and it also adds another area of interest more to this area of pin pricking as the design sheet develops but for now I'm going to leave it like that and I will do a French knot into there because French knots add lovely texture to pin pricking so I'll just do a French knot put a knot in my thread um, I need to have a look around the house have a scout around the house for some found objects that I can put on here as well and maybe little bits of fabric and things. Um, so I'll just come up through the back. One, two, three. And go down again, just a little bit away from there. Now this is Cotton Abroader 25 thread, so it's not very thick. So they're not massively obvious, these French knots, but if you build them up, one, two, three. If you build them up and do quite a few, then they just add a lovely texture. You probably can't even see them. There's a couple. Of, I'll do one more. Not got much thread on this needle now. So there. Okay. Now I'm hoping in a few weeks, three weeks or so, that the family situation I've got going on will be over. And I may try and list a class to start after that. But I'll have a think about it. Because um, it's kind of like, there is an end point but to the family thing. But it's it could be flexible, I just don't know. Yet. So I'm a bit up in the air. So there. So that's the very, very, very early stages of a design sheet. Very early. And I've got a massive amount of paper to fill, as you can see there. But we'll come back to this tomorrow. And next time I come back, 
Um, I'm, I'll probably have done more on it by then, but I'll refer to it for sure. Um, okay.